In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, amen. Please be seated. Well, let's just say that the forecasters are calling for 12 inches of snow overnight tonight. And you're excited because you're going to get a day off of school, a day off from work. So you go to bed very excited, firmly believing that tomorrow you're going to sleep in, stay home, and enjoy the day at home. Then tomorrow morning comes. You've got all the blinds closed overnight, so you can't see outside yet. And someone comes into your room and says, I don't know if it snowed last night. Now what do you do? A small sliver of doubt has come into your mind. You have believed and trust, trusted the forecasters that it's snowing and you've planned the day off. But what do you do with that bit of doubt? Do you pull the covers over your head and say, no, it snowed. I believe it snowed. You can't tell me otherwise. Or do you try to muster yourself up and say, I must have faith, I must believe that it snowed, and I must not doubt? Of course not. You go to the window, you open the blinds, and see if it really snowed. You see if you believed wrongly or rightly. You see if you should go back to bed or get ready for school or work. In our gospel reading for today, we see Jesus teaching us the same thing about our faith in him and what to do when we doubt. When he gets a question from John the Baptist asking, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? Jesus says essentially, look out the window. Look at what I'm doing. And see that I am indeed the Christ your Savior. When we have doubts, the answer isn't anywhere inside of us. We must always look outside the window, so to speak. Look out the window of our own hearts and look to Jesus, the object of our faith and his holy word. Now that might sound simple, but it's a big deal right now because there's a lot of doubt and skepticism in our world about Jesus. We've heard multiple times now that one of the fastest rising demographics in America right now are the so-called nuns. And I'm not talking about Roman Catholic nuns. I'm talking about those that declare themselves as having no religion, no religious affiliation at all. Many of those nuns are Young people who grew up thinking they were Christians and believed in Jesus. Then at some point, they have decided that they don't really want to claim Jesus at all. They don't believe in him. Where's all this doubt coming from and what do we do with it? Recently, there was a pastor in one of the America's largest, biggest, mega, mega evangelical churches who all of a sudden left the ministry. He divorced his wife and declared that he didn't believe in this Jesus stuff anymore. And many people were left wondering, where did that come from? I read just another quick little story about a pastor from another mega evangelical church that left and became an atheist. He said he felt trapped every Sunday telling lies in the pulpit about what he believed. But he found freedom, not in Jesus, but when he left his church and attended his first atheist convention, standing in front of 1,500 cheering atheists while he told his story of his doubts and his conversion to atheism and his newfound freedom apart from Jesus. What do we do with that doubt? Pull the covers over our head and say, oh no, we must believe harder. It's not going to work. 
And then there's our own doubts all of the time for both you and me. Maybe you've had doubt if Jesus is really right about all of this sexuality stuff that we hear with transgenderisms and homosexuality and whatever else is out there. Maybe you've had doubts about that, if Jesus is really right. Maybe you have doubt if there really is a heaven and life after death. Maybe you've had doubts about church on Sunday morning. Maybe you felt like you don't get anything out of it or it's not that important. Maybe you have doubts when you don't feel like praying or don't feel like reading the Bible. Maybe you've had doubts when you've read certain parts of the Bible, maybe the violent parts in the Old Testament. Or those prophecies of Daniel or Ezekiel and Revelation. At any rate, what do you do with those doubts in your own minds and hearts? Well, I've already given you the short answer, which is to look outside of yourself to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. That's what John the Baptist does. He looks outside the window of the prison cell and asks, Jesus, are you the one, the Messiah? And Jesus says, go and tell John what you see and hear. The blind receive their sight. Jesus does things only Jesus, true God, can do. With lots of witnesses all around. In John chapter 9, the religious leaders spend all day trying to show that Jesus really didn't give sight to the blind man who was born blind. But they can't do it. The evidence is too good and right in front of them. Jesus did something no one else can do. He gave sight to someone born blind. So look at Jesus. Look at what he does. He gives sight. He gives hearing. He raises the dead. He makes the lame to walk and rises from the dead himself. So that's the short answer to doubt. Look at Jesus. But there are a few more different points that I would want to give to you today. First of all, we must always remember where doubt comes from. If you have any doubts at all, ever, Rest assured that it's not coming from God. It's coming from the devil. Doubt has always been his tool. In the Garden of Eden, he said to Adam and Eve, did God really say? And that's what he's still doing to us today. Every true claim about God that we believe, the devil is saying, really? Is that really true so first of all, we must tell the devil where to go. I'll let you fill in the blanks. Secondly, if we have any doubt, we should make sure that we don't have that we don't have what's called the coal miners faith. Obviously, this is nothing about coal miners in West Virginia. But there's a story about an old coal miner who asked what he believed, and he said, I believe what the church believes. Oh? question replies then what does the church believe and the coal miner answered the church believes what I believe and eventually they gave this kind of faith its own Latin phrase in the early church fides carbonaria the faith of a coal miner that is not faith that will make it the long run all of us Christians must actually know what we believe, teach, and confess. I believe what my church believes, or I believe what my pastor believes. It doesn't cut it. We must actually know what we believe, and we know that by looking out the window and seeing Jesus and searching the scriptures, we must go to the source. Jesus in his holy inspired word and know just exactly what it is that we believe of about him. This, I truly believe, is part of the issue today for people who leave Christianity. They've just thought, I believe what the church believes, without looking 
out the window and examining what the church truly believes. And then when the devil starts working on them, they look inside of themselves and don't really see anything there, and they lose faith in Jesus. The coal miner's faith won't do against doubt. We must look outside of ourselves and see what Jesus teaches in the scriptures and even in our Lutheran confessions. But thirdly and most importantly, we must understand that faith has an object. Faith doesn't just float around in the air or inside of our hearts someplace Faith always looks outside to someone or something and trusts. Faith is always an acting faith. It's always clinging on to something. In our case, faith is always clinging on to Jesus, looking to him and moving toward him in communion with him. Faith isn't this lump in your heart which you feel all good about and says, yeah, I have faith in my heart. Faith is you in action, trusting Jesus and believing his word, his resurrection from the dead. So if doubt ever comes up, we know the answer is to examine the object of our faith, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, to look at him and see him again as he is true, that he is our life, that he is risen from the dead and living and reigning, that he has forgiven our sins. Jesus says, do you have doubts this morning? Look, see, hear what I have done. I gave sight to the blind. Have you ever seen that done before? I made the deaf to hear. How about that? Look, I made the lame to walk with the word and I raised the dead with the word. Have you ever heard of anybody rising from the dead? Look, I died on the cross on Good Friday with a full weight and punishment of your sins and the sins of the whole world. And look, on Easter morning I rose from the dead and for the next 40 days gave convincing proofs to over 500 witnesses that I was indeed risen, living and reigning. And look, you have my word, which is true and is proven over and over and over again and will continue to be true. It is the most examined work of art in the whole world. And it always comes out true. And look, I baptized you in those waters and I gave you my spirit who now lives in you. And look, here at the altar, I give you my very own body and blood under the bread and wine for your forgiveness. Do you ever have any doubts? Then put your faith in action and look out the window to Jesus. It's only a few Verses later in this chapter of Matthew 11, that Jesus says these comforting and familiar words, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's the answer to doubt. Come to Jesus. Any of you who are laden with heavy burdens and cares and anxieties, come to Jesus and he will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Get up, look out the window, and what you will see is all true. Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, your God who has come to save you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith to Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.